Can you lick your chin? Touch my tongue to my chin? Mm -hmm. I think I can do that. I think I've done that before. Mm. I don't want to do it right now. I didn't ask you I'm to. too tired. I just asked you to go. Take so much energy. <laughs> it just sounds exhausting. I'm low on energy right now. You're low on energy right now? Mm -hmm. You're low on energy? Yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah. You're low on energy? Yeah. You, we both can be low on energy. Only I can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only I'm allowed to have things, Paige. Welcome to the 51st episode of Beer and Fear. Ow. Do you want me to do it over again? No. <laughs> that was funny. Weird signal. <laughs> My name is Paige. That's what you said. My name is Zach. <laughs> How do we do these things? You uh, said, ow. I was clearing my throat. Uh, this episode <laughs> is on a person named Tyler Hadley. I hope that's his name. <laughs> Pretty sure that's his name. I think it is. You remembered to uh, include that. You've been forgetting. Yep, forgot twice now. Tell me about your week, bud. <laughs> such, it's such a dull intro. We can do it over again. <laughs> I was in Michigan yeah. for most of it. And I moved a lot of stuff. And uh, saw some fun things. Mm. I got ice cream. Mm. I went to the water. I stood in Lake Michigan for a little bit. Just closed my eyes and wished I could be like that forever. I told my family that sometimes when I'm out here, I want to, or if I'm like out and back <clears throat> on my porch or if I'm at work and I step outside, I'll close my eyes and I'll just pretend that I'm at Lake Michigan and that I can smell the lake and hear the waves and feel the sand in the water. You know, I'll just like meditate for a little mm. bit. That's my happy place. Gotcha. So it's nice going back there and remembering, you know, getting that refreshed in my head mm -hmm. for whenever I need to escape Illinois. It's nice. Good for you. Michigan was fun. And now I'm back. And now my mom lives up there. Wild. She's four and a half hours away. It's rough. Yeah. I worry for her sometimes. Mm. It's okay. Um, it was, uh, quite the ordeal moving up there and unpacking and dealing with all that. So very exhausting. Weather was nice. It was good, but, uh, just tiring. Mm. It was a nice break though. That's good. Today I went golfing with my dad. We both did pretty bad, but it was a lot of fun. And I think I'm getting better. I think, uh, well, I can't say for sure. But part of me thinks that I would have done a lot better had I realized that the um, clubs go from uh, long to short, six, seven, eight, nine. I thought they went nine, eight, seven, six, mm -hmm. long to short. So I was shooting all of my holes after my drive, my initial drive onto the fairway. I was then going to a nine iron and shooting to the green with a nine iron every time uh, when I should have been using a six iron because I thought it was nine, eight, seven, six long to short, but it wasn't. I was just an idiot. What a riveting story. Mm-hmm. See, if you were a golfer, you would have been like, huh. I feel like you're right. Huh. <laughs> I'll tell my dad that. <laughs> uh, He's a golfer. Yeah. It, uh, I felt pretty dumb, but I still had fun. I shot, um, I shot a uh, 137 on a 72 course, <laughs> so that's about twice as uh, twice as bad. Yeah, I did 200 percent bad. Oh, that game, but it was fun. It was good. At least you got out and did something today. I got a bag. I got yeah. a bag now. I got uh, my dad gave me his old irons, and I bought a putter. Um, so it's like I'm a pro golfer now, essentially. Skills. You saw the hat. You I saw, saw my hat. You saw, saw my polo. Outfit. Yeah, you saw my polo. That was like I was looking at a professional golf player. Yeah, that's you know? me. Like you could be on 
whatever whatever they're called <laughs> pga yeah that <laughs> <laughs> whatever that is <laughs> yep i don't know the lingo and then my uh my washing machine's still broken mm. yep they uh they replaced the thing on it and they're like well that didn't fix it we're just gonna get you a new one and my i have one pair of underwear <laughs> <laughs> for tomorrow and so i gotta go to a laundromat for the first time in my life, and do my laundry. Time to start going oh, you know commando. What? There's a... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> there's a uh, washing machine in our building. Yeah, downstairs. For these six units downstairs. I think it, it's for... It's supposed to be for the one-bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. Because they don't have a washer and dryer built in. Like the rest of the, like the two bedrooms do. Mm -hmm. I might go over there, knock on their door, and see if they would mind letting me use it. Um, if they say no... Cool. I'll go to a laundromat. Mm. Yeah. My week was great. There we go. How was yours? Thanks. <laughs> it's a real long pause. I'm very tired. I can tell. Mm -hmm. How was yours? That's fine. Okay. Why don't you uh, <laughs> tell us about no, the... <laughs> no. <laughs> Work was good. Uh, I saw my parents on Sunday. That was nice. I've been watching American Horror Story with my roommate. Hell yeah. Uh, we're marathoning it. We're on Coven right now. Hell yeah. So that's been nice. Um, I got a haircut. I didn't notice. Oh. I noticed whenever you get a haircut. No, you don't. Uh, yeah, I do. No, you don't. Do too. No, you don't. Totally. It's black. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's about it. Nothing crazy. Nice. It's been hot this week. It's been gross. I uh, loved the Michigan weather because it was like a high of 80 and less humid. And uh, I got back here and realized how much I hate Illinois weather. But. Yeah, I'm not a fan of our weather. That's life. And that's <laughs> life. Uh, anyways, our beer is from Buckle Down Brewery and it's called Party Pillow. Are we going to buckle down? We are going to buckle down. Party pillow. Party pillow. Okay, I see. I see. <laughs> Got it. All right. Um, uh, have we ever done buckle down? Nope. Okay, cool. Um, so I can go into there about me, about us. Uh, buckle about down. Me. About me. Just me. <laughs> Just Paige. Uh, buckle down brewing was founded in 2013 by friends, Ike, uh, Orcut, Orcut. He's the head brewer, and Sean Mahoney in Lyons, Illinois, a small, hardworking community just outside of Chicago. I don't know, Jack, about Lyons. Yeah, Lyons is out of Chicago. Are they hardworking? Sure. Okay. Uh, we share a philosophy that two quality, um, yeah, the two qualities that make great brewers, or great anything for that matter, are creativity and determination. Plus, there's something uniquely gratifying about working hard, working with your hands, and making something you are proud of. We're putting that philosophy into practice by brewing small batch raft beer. <laughs> <laughs> small, small batch craft craft beer where did that come from <laughs> from hopped up american ipas to lagers to pastry stouts i want one of those i'm kind of curious we're brewing the kind of beer that we love to drink and we're looking forward to sharing it with everybody who's willing to join us hell yeah nice times good we're gonna times. enjoy it with you buckle down yeah, buckle down, baby. Uh, Party Pillow is a Hefeweizen. <laughs> Let's go! It has a 5.3% ABV. Uh, it's a pale, refreshing German-style wheat beer brewed with a large percentage of malted wheat. This party has a dry finish and fluffy mouthfeel. Authentic German Weiss beer. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Weiss, uh, w is kind of like a V sound. Oh, Weiss. Yeah, Weiss beer. Weiss beer. Uh, Vice beer yeast provides the distinctive soft banana and clove character. Yep, 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 yep. Good times. Uh, beer Advocate does not have a score for it. Uh, its average rating is a three point six six. Okay. It's got nothing. 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 Doesn't even have like a rating in style or overall. Do you have any? Uh, how many ratings is that? Three point six six. It's got eight ratings. Okay. All right. Buckle down, Hefeweizen. Yeah, uh, the the clove and banana is are the pretty popular flavors from Hefeweizens. 
I don't know if it's a result of just brewing that specific style of beer or if all brewers, when they make Hefeweizens, tend to put the same stuff in them. I don't know. Mm. I don't know that much about them. I just know that I love them. Mm. I'll go get it. Okay. And turn on some lights. It's dark in here all it's of a sudden. very dark. Speaking of Hefeweizens, mm. it's a funny coincidence. What? I don't want to see this is what I got for you. Oh, wait, no, what? Yeah, from Michigan. No. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh-huh, for me? Flag, for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's so exciting. Summer Fling. It's a Hefeweizen Ale. Remember, you've had a few of those. I and like you, Summer Fling. You really Fling. like them, yeah. Oh, so. buddy. All for you. You're so sweet. Ludington Bay Brewing Co. Shout out. You can't have these. Ludington, Michigan. That's one of my favorite beers. I didn't have it when I was there, when I ate there on my vacation. I wanted to try something new. It's I had nice a couple couple cream ales. Yeah. So. That's so exciting. Thank you. Right? You're welcome. I appreciate that. You're That's such a, a good little beer. sweetie bean. I know. Well, I know. You got me something from uh, Vegas, so. Look at this can. It's a pillow. It's a pillow that's partying. It's a pillow that's blowing a noisemaker. Make sure the camera can see. <laughs> An unfiltered wheat beer. You know, I really don't like that not every single brewery does what they pair best with. Like, I, I'm curious. Uh, yeah. I know uh, we've had a few that, uh, like, yeah, pair this beer with these things. It's not very common, I guess. Um, but if you look up the style, we can find out. Uh, craftbeer.com usually says uh, what... Uh, I'll pull it up. Casota, you can't have beer. You are a cat. Look at those little fangies. Look at those little fangies. German style Hefeweizen pairs with seafood, chevra, chevra cheese, Never heard of it. and key lime pie. Mm. Best served in a vase glass. That's another glass I gotta get, like a Hefeweizen or a wheat beer glass. I can smell that all the way over here. That's pretty good. I love. Half a license. You can really smell the banana on this one. And wit beer. Two very close. Maybe that's clove. My sniffer's that's banana, broken. Yeah. No, it's banana. I'm not crazy. It's definitely banana. I'm not hating on the smell. <laughs> There's you can't really go wrong with a half a wise. I've never had a bad one. They're incredible beers. Bam, look at that. Look at that. So rare to have a good pour for me. Why don't you talk about the beer a little bit, Paige? Sniffies. Before we dive in. I mean, it just smells like banana candy. Yep. And a little bit like clove. Not a lot. I'm hoping it's on the more sweet side. Color? Mm -hmm. It looks like apple juice. Yeah, that's a good description. Uh, it's about the same color. Very little head on this. Um, oh, you almost spilled. Almost, but I didn't. <laughs> Looks like it's uh, decently carbonated. There's still a lot of bubbles coming up, but uh, mine has no stumps don't stick around foam whatsoever. Yeah, got all those bubbles though. Oh yeah, I got a bunch too. Yeah, it smells great. Looks I great. Keep wanting to sniff it. Looks uh, crisp and clean. Oh, that is banana. Yep. Yeah, that's that's banana forward. I feel like it's a weird name for this beer. Party pillow. Yeah, I don't know. What should it have been named like? party banana to fit the description better yeah i would have imagined a cute little banana with a little hat on well um i'm thinking uh reminds me of food truck that was a pilsner it's like how do you get food truck out of a pilsner you know i don't know there's probably just like a beer like like a website you can go on you know how like world of warcraft has like a name generator oh, yeah, like a, yeah. <laughs> there's a craft beer name generator it picks a verb and a noun yes. and it just makes a beer name one and the same <laughs> That's it. They're like, oh, okay, party pillow. That makes a lot of sense. Hefeweizen's uh, an ale, but it, it it's very reminiscent of lagers. I don't know. I like a lot of stuff that, that that's like that. Like a uh, food truck. Pilsner is Pilsner's a lager. Um, so just crisp stuff like this that doesn't taste like uh, Bud Light, you know? Mm. It's got a little more substance Some to it. Oomph. Yeah. It's delicious. Let me get another drink. We get let me get the the taste on my tongue. I feel like this is something that I would sample, but not get a whole can of, and be like, "Oh, that sounds interesting. Um, let me try that." Like in a flight? Mm, yeah. Okay. 
Would you drink it again? No. Okay. I would not. Why? Uh, I don't know how to describe my opinion of it. I don't mind banana flavors, and I think that, you know, that's tasty in its own way. Like your banana bread beer or whatever that you get from Craft all the time. Oh, yeah. But there's some, something about it that's just like in the swallow, the flavor is very off-putting for me. Okay. There's, I don't know if it's the clove coming through when you, when you swallow it or something, but it's just kind of like the banana goes away and it's just me. Okay. Do you prefer uh, IPAs over uh, an ale like this? Yes. Something that's more crisp and clean and yes. less thick? Yes. All right. Yeah, for me, it's, I, I guess I could, it's either or. It just really depends. I've had really bad ales like this, like lighter wheat ales, and I've had very bad IPAs. Um, so I guess, yeah, it all depends. I like it. It's refreshing. This is our first beer, so I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a three. It's mighty bold. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna give it a six. Okay. Good pick. This is our first uh, Hefeweizen. Very first Hefeweizen. Is it really? <laughs> Never done a half wise before. I was looking forward to doing one, and this is a good one to to start with. Excellent, and I, I like. I think it's just funny how the beer that I got you is also a half wise So I know you like that beer. I do. You're you're kind of hard to <laughs> shop for. <laughs> like we. What do you mean? Okay, so we stopped at several stores. I knew you liked beer. I knew you liked this beer, so I got this for you. And I was we were shopping around too. What's your favorite kind of wine? Do you like wine? Yeah, I like wine. I usually like red wine. You know what kind of red wine? Uh, Do you like dry wines, no. sweet, wines, sweet wines, like really sweet red wines, like mm -hmm. fruit wine? Anywhere on the spectrum of sweet wine, really. Okay. Like Merlot? Yeah, I like Merlot. Okay. All right. That's good to know. I was I had no idea your Cooper, taste of wines. Uh, Cooper's Hawk has a really mm. good romance red. Mm. Delicious. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, wine is uh, amazing. I love wine. I just didn't know what you liked. Mm -hmm. so After all these years of friendship, there's still things we need to learn about each other. I didn't want other. to take a gamble. Also, you're al allergic to strawberries. So I didn't want to get you any <laughs> sort of fruit wine or medley wine that had strawberries in it. Thanks for not killing me. You're welcome. There, there's your beer. <laughs> As Paige mentioned, and I've been neglecting to, yep. this episode is about Tyler Hadley. I didn't know who this guy was. However, there was a picture that I came across that I remembered seeing on Reddit that talked about him. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then that was the end of it. I didn't know the dude's name when you mentioned it. I looked him up, started doing research, and then I saw that picture. And I was like, oh, that's him. So we're going to talk about him. I'm going to give his background and kind of set your section up without uh, giving away too much info. So Tyler Hadley was born on December 16th, 1993. He lived in Port St. Lucie, St. Lucie County, Florida. With his mother, Mary Jo, and his father, Blake. According to many high schoolers and 20-somethings, there was hardly anything to do in the town. It was boring, and many of the town's teens and young adults turned to drugs and drinking. The town was given the nickname Pot St. Lucie. Not very inventive or creative. I would have um, to agree. Local law enforcement busted 69 nice, <laughs> pot farms in town. Damn. But the phenomenon persisted. They're still out there, says Joseph Waddle, who recently graduated from St. Lucie West Centennial High. Marijuana is out of control. It's everywhere. You can't go to a party without smelling it in the air. Tyler always seemed pretty close to his parents. His father was a power plant worker, and the two would sometimes play basketball in front of the house together after returning from work. Neighbors would occasionally hear the family having fun in the backyard pool. However, Tyler's childhood was somewhat troubled. Tyler was born prematurely and had to stay in the hospital for three weeks before he could go home to his family. And although his mom, Mary Jo, was with him at the hospital, Tyler may have missed some of the mother nurturing so important of newborns. Growing up, Tyler was prone to illnesses and he would often get sick when his older brother would not. This may have been a symptom of his hormone imbalance and his diagnosis of hypothyroidism. Patients with thyroid disorders can struggle with weight gain, which was in Tyler's case, and although the boy wasn't overweight, he still developed bulimia. Oh, shit. 
This condition may have also contributed to Tyler's increasing low self-esteem issues and constant self-degradation. He'd constantly refer to himself as stupid, dumb, and or fat, even at an early age. As a child, he would constantly take medications ranging from Accutane, a controversial acne medication, Lavoxyl, a hypothyroid balancer, SSRIs for mood disorders such as anxiety and depression, and even HGH, human growth hormone. Oh, shit. An extremely controversial treatment. Think bodybuilder and baseball player drug scandals. HGH. Combine these complications and medications with Tyler's early obsession with death and constant suicidal ideations, which his family tried in vain to help him push through his emotional problems. Uh, premature birth, body disorders, mood disorders, and obsession with death, daily cocktails of prescribed medications, and eating disorder, and his own experimentations with illegal substances such as ecstasy and marijuana. And from all these things brings a troubled teenager. Sure. Once Tyler entered high school, his mood changed drastically. He'd always been quiet and difficult to read, but now he seemed eccentric, unpredictable, troubled. A friend, Cameron Adams, is quoted saying, He had a bizarre personality, really hyper. He'd always try to pull a crowd. In the middle of a lesson, he would start laughing. He would just blurt out stuff. Mm -hmm. Once in the middle of a biology class, he started mooing loudly like a cow. <laughs> Kind of sounds like me. Uh, I never moved loudly in class, but but I, I was always uh, I was an attention seeker. I remember. Oh, actually, I don't remember this, but my mom told me this happened. I got in trouble in it might have been second or third grade. We were all taking a test. I was taking the exam, and then all of a sudden, uh, I felt the need to start shouting out the answers to the test questions. <laughs> what grade was this? Number five is B. Number six is C. I think it was second grade. Uh, yep. A little troublemaker. Yeah, I, I was definitely a, a troublemaker. My mom has a lot of funny stories about the ways, different ways that I would get in trouble in school. Uh, most of Tyler's friends would claim that the 17-year-old finally snapped after years of being punched and beaten by his father. Or at least that's what Tyler would tell his friends. His mother was domineering and his father was strict and alcoholic and would occasionally take out his anger issues on Tyler. However, these accusations were false. Mm -hmm. And according to Tyler's older brother, their parents were too loving and pushovers, giving in to Tyler's every want and need. Michael Mandel, Tyler's closest childhood friend, who I hope you talk about. I do. Looked to Blake Hadley, Tyler's father, as his own father figure, saying that he was one of the nicest people he's ever met. Mm -hmm. Tyler's mother was also a great soul and loving parent. How could she be anything but nice as an elementary school teacher for the last 24 years? A fellow friend and faculty member, Chelsea Wells, claimed that Mary Jo, quote, had that mom instinct. She was a great mom. She was a great teacher. As Tyler grew older, his misuse of drugs and alcohol increased. His suicidal ideations got worse and his erratic behavior, erratic misbehavior worsened. In April 2011, Tyler got into a fight at a friend's house and was arrested on a charge of aggravated battery. Because he had a juvenile record, having previously been convicted of a burglary, he was sentenced to a week at St. Lucie County Jail, followed by two weeks of house arrest. His mother confiscated his cell phone, forcing Tyler to rely on Facebook to communicate with his friends. During my research, I did see uh, a lot of Facebook conversations mm -hmm. between Tyler and some of his friends. Um, I elected not to read those. I originally had one in my notes, and I was going to like... Oh, Tyler, I was going to act as Tyler, and I was going to act as his <laughs> friend, go back and forth. But this is um, not a good person, and I don't think that would be right uh, doing something like that, you know? Uh, it shouldn't make light of things like this. But if you're interested, uh, if you're listening, you can check out uh, further articles and, and see some of those uh, Facebook message conversations. On a Friday night in June, Tyler came home, in his words, smashed as fuck, after a night during which he had urinated on his friend at Desiree Gerard's bed. His mother admitted him to New Horizons, a mental health clinic. Tyler was forced to attend counseling daily. In order to commit Tyler, Mary Jo invoked the Baker Act, which under Florida law allows for parents to commit their children, if under the age of 18, to involuntary psychiatric treatment. The act is only used if it is deemed a, quote, substantial likelihood that without intervention, the child would cause, quote, serious bodily harm to themselves or others in the near future. Mm -hmm. When a coworker asked if Mary Jo worried whether Tyler might ever hurt her, Mary Jo said she was only worried that Tyler might hurt himself. 
In early July, Mary Jo had told friends that Tyler was over the hurdle. She was so happy about Tyler's improvement, said one friend. She really felt he was back to himself. On Friday, July 15th, 2011, Tyler and his parents had gone out to dinner as a family. On the way, they stopped at the Circle K, where Tyler ran into his friend Cameron Adams. Tyler appeared to be in a good mood. During the interaction, Cameron mentioned that it was his birthday. He and his girlfriend were going to Benihana's. Have you ever been there? No, I've never been to Benihana's. I don't think I... Uh, no, I think I have. <clears throat> I must have been pretty young. I can't remember. Happy birthday, said Tyler. Come to my house tomorrow. I'm having a party. We'll celebrate. Tyler had been telling his friends all week he was going to have a party, but no one believed him. He had never thrown a party before, and it was impossible to believe that his parents, who had been increasingly strict with him lately, would give their consent. On the morning of Saturday, July 16th, 2011, Tyler was messaging a friend, Matt Nobile, on Facebook. I guess I did include this one. Matt says, did you do it? Tyler said, no, but I'm gonna. Matt said, bet. You really should now. Do it. Tyler says, don't worry, I am. Then I'm having a party. Matt says, yeah, party time. N-word. <laughs> N-word. At 1.15 p.m., Tyler posted a message on his Facebook wall. Party at my crib tonight. Maybe. No one was convinced by this, but at 8.15 p.m., Tyler posted another message. Party at my house. Hit me up. I'll save the details of the party and how the night of July 16th, 2011 played out, but I'll end it with a couple, uh, conver- I'll end my section with a couple conversations between Tyler and his friends that night. Uh, thanks for having us over, said Ricardo, and thanks for the beer. I was just wanting to do something fun before I left, said Tyler. Where are you going? I'm going to kill myself, said Tyler. Why would you do that? Because I did something really bad. What'd you do? It can't be that bad. Don't worry, said Tyler. If I get caught, I'll be in jail a long time. In his bedroom, Tyler found Kimberly Theban. She and Tyler were close friends. She lived two houses down the street. I'm going away for 60 years, he told Kimberly. His voice seemed to come from a faraway place. Why, she asked. He said she'd find out tomorrow. Hmm. Oh, um, and I don't know if you mentioned at the party, the beer that he was talking about. Thanks for the beer. Uh, apparently they were drinking the beer that uh, shall not be named. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so disappointed when I saw that. <laughs> you read off part of what I was going to read, so now I need to start from another spot. It's okay. Yeah, I knew I might uh, overlap just a little bit, but I apologize. Not the first time that's happened on this show. I'll just go from here. Uh, the party was just getting started when Mike Young, oh, random dude. A random dude. When Mike Young arrived with 10 or so of his friends around 11.30 p.m., Mike, a popular athletic junior, knew the host only by sight. Uh, Tyler was distinctive looking, tall and skinny, nearly cadaverous, at six foot one and 160 pounds. Mm. What is that wet? 180? At school, he was quiet, approaching nonverbal, though occasionally prone to the mooing, mooing incidents. He hung out with potheads, juvenile delinquents, pill poppers... And they weren't really the type of kids that Michael uh, liked to hang out with. I was just thinking. Mostly nonverbal, except for the mooing. Except for the mooing. <laughs> Besides the mooing. That's essentially all he did when he spoke. Uh, but it was a warm summer evening in July, and there was absolutely nothing else going on in Port St. Port? <laughs> Port St. Lucie. There never was anything going on in Port St. Lucie. You mean Pot St. Lucie? Pot St. Lucie. Uh, Mike and his friends had already spent three hours killing time at the Mall in Stewart, 20 minutes down the coast, and another hour at McDonald's, as you do as a teenager, hanging out at McDonald's. So they figured they may as well check out the party. Tyler answered the door wearing a long black t-shirt, black dickies, and a black Nike Air Force high top sneakers. He seemed anxious, or at least as anxious as you can be while on ecstasy. It was clear that Tyler was rolling. His eyes were large and white. His pupils expanded. And he kept rubbing his hands together, nervously clenching his fists. Uh, Tyler said, I don't want no one smoking inside. It's my parents' Ah, house. Double negative. He wants everyone to smoke inside. (laughs) Before long, there were 60 kids in the house. Most of them had no idea who Tyler was. They draped themselves over the couches, played beer pong on the dining table, scrounged for food in the kitchen, cupboards, and gathered in packs out front, tossing empty cans onto the lawn. In the living room, when bottles fell to the floor and shattered, kids laughed. Cigarettes were extinguished on the rug, the kitchen counter, the wall. Tyler seemed less concerned with the destruction of his home than with the noise. If the neighbors got alarmed, they might call the police. Mm. Uh, Actually, 
just stay in the house, Tyler said to nobody in particular. You can smoke inside. I don't care. It's talking to a wall. <laughs> just move into a wall. Mike was talking with some girls on the couch when a very drunk skater kid, he appeared to look like one of Tyler's friends, ambled over. He said, I smell dead people. Mike looked up and asked, what's that supposed to mean? What the hell? The skater kid said, I don't know. Some people are smoking. That's all. And then Mike said, all right, dude, whatever. Oh, okay. So dead people smell like people smoking. Got yeah, it. apparently. A large crowd had gathered around the beer pong table. The table was directly next to the family computer where kids took turns playing songs on YouTube. Mike queued up Wiz Khalifa's No Sleep because oh, yeah. Mike is sick. <laughs> and a couple of tracks from a Lil Wayne mixtape. On the YouTubes. So cool. The computer area was even filthier than the rest of the house. The white keyboard was tacky with brownish dried liquid. Beer, maybe, or Coke. Nobody looked too closely. Mm. Jose Arazo, Arazo, a slight, soft-spoken 17-year-old with straight black hair combed at an angle over his forehead, was playing beer pong when he heard someone say, oh, he killed his parents. Everyone laughed, and Jose won 15 games of beer pong in a row. Yeah, you go, Jose. But wait, what was that about the parents? <laughs> <laughs> Can we just backtrack real quick? <laughs> Uh, people kept asking Tyler where his parents were. He told one person they went to Georgia, another person they went to Orlando, uh, another person he said that they don't live here, that's his house. Hmm. Mark Andrews, uh, who's 21, met Tyler 11 years ago when Mark's family moved to Port St. Port. He's saying Port. Pot, just say Pot St. Lucie. Pot St. Lucie. <laughs> Tyler and Mark's younger brothers were friends, and the families lived down the street from each other. When Tyler was 10 years old, he showed up at the Andrews' house after a fight with his mother. He vowed that he would kill his parents. Mm. Mark told Tyler that all the parents pissed off all parents pissed off their kids, and mm. Tyler, calming down, agreed, and the two boys laughed about it. Um, Tyler, who has a friend named Marky Phillips, Marky Phillips missed the party because he was visiting his grandparents in Chicago. Oh, lame. Dang. Uh, but he had hung out with Tyler two nights earlier. Um, playing video games and doing teenage boy stuff. Mm -hmm. And Tyler had seemed pretty fine. But two weeks before that, they had been hanging out at Marky's house when Tyler blurted out in the middle of a conversation that he wanted to kill his parents and have a big party after. That's a really random thing to say in the a middle of a conversation. A little bit strange, wouldn't you say? Nobody had ever done that before. Throw a huge party with bodies still in the house. Tyler's got issues. Okay. By midnight at the Hadley residence, there were 100 people and two dogs. Mm -hmm. I don't really know why that was counted. A black Labrador named Sophie and an old partially deaf and blind beagle. Sophie was nowhere to be found, but the beagle was hiding in the bedroom that it belonged to Tyler's older brother, Ryan. He had moved to North Carolina six weeks earlier to attend college. The party was only several hours old, but the room looked as if it had been ransacked by thieves. Clothes and bedding were scattered across the floor and the bread frame was cracked. And the poor beagle was under the bed. Hmm. Stephanie Castanda. Castanda? Castaneda. Castaneda. I think so. Yeah. Arrived with her friend Joshua Corte around midnight. She had a crush on Tyler. Oh. Uh -huh. But did not know him very well. He was standing awkwardly by the wall next to, his, next to his mother's computer and wasn't talking to his friends. When Stephanie went to the bathroom, she found the beagle hiding in the shower. Oh. Uh -huh. Uh, at 12.30 a.m., the party was running out of beer, so Tyler asked Mark Andrews and his girlfriend, Ashley Gershman, to drive him to the uh, to a gas station. I don't know how to pronounce the name. A block away. Tyler gave a wad of $20 bills to Mark, who was 21, and asked him to buy four cases of <laughs> I'm going to have to censor that. How dare you? While they waited in Mark's car, Tyler mentioned to Ashley that his father had died. Ashley, who didn't know Tyler very well, assumed he meant that his father had passed away a long time ago. Sure. When they got back to the house, the kids at the party were playing water pong because there wasn't enough beer. Oh, bar. One boy rocked around with a baggie of round white pills, selling them for a dollar apiece. Another Damn. sold marijuana. Fucking score. Anthony Snook, uh, dude, showed up around 12.45 a.m. because someone had texted him that Hadley's party was the biggest thing ever. Whoa. Poppin'. 
Uh, Snook noticed that the door to the master bedroom was closed, assuming that there were popular, or popular, assuming there were people inside getting high. He tried to enter, but it was locked. It was dark in the house, but he noticed a black smear about a foot long beneath the door. Ooh. It looked like an oil-based paint that someone had tried to unsuccessfully wipe away. <laughs> Justin Wright, a dude that wished to not be actually named, uh, arrived at 1.15 a.m. The first thing he noticed was the stench. It smelled like sweaty clothes that had been sitting around too long. The place was a mess. The sure. white ceramic floor tiles were grimy. Several picture frames were missing from the wall. Others hung askew. Dishes smeared with the remnants of instant macaroni and cheese accumulated in the kitchen. Justin asked Tyler if there were any house rules, and Tyler said, just do whatever you want. Mm. During Justin's game of beer pong, the ball rolled beneath the table, and it came to a rest in a sticky, thick, brown substance. Fucking gross. He was mildly grossed out, Justin was. Just mildly. But he didn't think too much of it. No. Yeah. He was only mildly grossed out. Why would he no, think any more of it? big. Uh, as Mark Andrews was leaving the party, Tyler asked if they could speak privately. Tyler went outside and ordered all the kids standing there to get back into the house so his neighbors wouldn't call the cops. Once mm -hmm. everyone was inside, Tyler turned to Mark. Dude, I did some things. I might go to prison. I might go away for life. I don't know. I'm freaking out right now. Mark said, what are you talking about? He said, Tyler says, dude, you're not going to believe me. No one will believe me. I freaking killed somebody. Mark said, that's his own business. He said, dude, killing someone is your own business. Don't be telling me that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know. I have an inkling of who he may have killed. <laughs> have a sneaking suspicion mm. around 1 a.m tyler asked his friend michael mandel to walk outside so that they could speak privately tyler and michael had been best friends since they were eight years old and mm -hmm. for much of the party they had sat together michael was chatting with other chatting with other friends and tyler staring into the distance <laughs> staring off into the void mooing. <laughs> mooing. Mm. and they say that you can still hear him mooing to, still this mooing day. to this day they walked to the stop sign at the end of the block, and when they got there, Tyler turned to Michael and said, I killed my parents. Oh. Michael said, yeah, right. I got it right. Because, like, I don't believe you. What are you talking about? He says, Michael, I'm being real. I'm not lying to you. If you look closely enough, you can see signs. Mm. He told Michael to look in the driveway. There were two cars close to the garage, a black Toyota Tacoma, a truck that belonged to his father, and his mother's red floored uh, expedition. If, par if his parents weren't home, why were their cars there? Right. Michael still would not believe it, so Tyler told him to look inside the garage. After making sure that nobody was watching, Michael slipped into the garage and turned on the light. He saw a bloody shoe print and immediately retreated, shutting the door behind him. Mm. Tyler led Michael to the master bedroom, where there were traces of blood on the door. Tyler unlocked the door and opened it. Michael saw dining room chairs and blood-soaked towels stacked in a huge pile. At the bottom of the pile, emerging from the debris, lay a thick white leg. <sighs> Tyler told Michael what had happened that afternoon. Shortly before five, Tyler had hid his parents' cell phone so they couldn't call for help. He listened to Feel Lucky, a song by the rapper Lil Boozy. I've never heard that song, have oh, you? Oh yeah, Lil Boozy. I have no idea. <laughs> to psych himself up. He took three pills of ecstasy because he worried that he he was worried that he couldn't kill his parents sober. In the garage, he found a claw hammer. Then he returned to the house. He stood behind his mother while she worked at the family computer for a full five minutes. Mm. He stood there, thinking about what he was about to do. Then he raised the claw end of the hammer and brought it down on Mary Jo's head. She screamed, why? Hearing his wife's screams, Blake ran out of the master bedroom and said, why? He saw his wife and said, why? And Tyler said, why the fuck not? He kept repeating this question while he beat his father to death with the claw end of the hammer. And Tyler pantomimed swinging the hammer for Michael. Mm. When it was over, Tyler said he wrapped towels around his parents' head and dragged them into the master bedroom. The bodies lay side by side, face down, the hammer on the ground between them. It took three hours to clean up all the blood and gore, much longer than Tyler had anticipated. He threw every piece of incriminating evidence he could find into the bedroom, burying the corpses beneath a pile of broken dishes, shattered glass, bloody towels, and pillowcases. Clorox wipes and a canister of coffee grounds. He took a shower, and then he told Michael he stared at his reflection in the bathroom mirror and laughed. Hmm... 
Max Mazur, a friend of Tyler's, who was standing in the hallway outside the master bedroom, saw Michael rush from the room, slamming the door behind him. He said that Michael looked deranged and that he kept looking over both shoulders. But Michael didn't end up leaving the party. He stayed for another 45 minutes posing for selfies with Tyler. In one photo taken with Michael's cell phone, the two best friends stand in what appeared to be the garage. While Michael's expression is stern and defiant, Tyler is raising an orange plastic cup. Like, why would you stay? I don't know if, if you talk about it. I, um, that was the selfie I'm, I was talking about that uh, I saw on Reddit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that selfie, which we'll put on the website, to his right, I think, or to his left, I don't know, one of the other people is uh, Michael Mandel, who Hadley, has shown, Hadley had shown his parents' dead bodies two moments before the picture was taken. And I, when I was doing my research, I saw a website. It played a video. It just started automatically playing. So I watched it. It was about this. And they were interviewing Michael. And they talked about this selfie. And they were like, why did you take that? And he said he took the selfie because he knew that was the last time that he'd ever see Tyler. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the interviewer was like, you know, it sort of seems like to people outside that you're okay with this. You're, you know, you took a picture with him. He's like, no, I just knew that, uh, you know, I'd never see him again. And, um, I forget whose idea it was. I think it was Michael's idea to take it. I don't know. Cause he, they were so such good friends, childhood friends. He wanted to not necessarily memorialize him but re just remember him you know that was the last time he knew he'd ever see him that was crazy mm -hmm. uh close to 2 a.m somebody stood up and announced that there was another house party being thrown by a neighbor of mike young's that Hell popular yeah. kid kids began running outside tossing their drinks onto the grass opening car doors tyler ran out after them uh joshua corte had just settled into his car when someone slammed on the driver's side window it was tyler he said where's everybody going and josh rolled down his window and said there's another party so Tyler said, oh, okay, bye. See ya. Joshua said he was blank-faced, like he had like no emotion on. Mm -hmm. uh, 14 cars peeled out of Tyler's neighborhood. The caravan went up Prima Vista, Vista to Bay Shore. When they reached their destination, the house was dark and quiet, and a girl who, owned, who lived in the house came out and said, I'm not having a party. That was just a rumor. What are you guys doing here? Uh. Uh, the commotion of the departing cars was finally too much for Tyler's neighbors. Rianne Wallace, or Rayanne Wallace, who lived next door, had known Tyler since he was born. Uh, Ray Ann Wallace got fed up. She couldn't understand why Tyler was throwing such a noisy party or why his parents would allow it. And a group of boys from the party drifted onto her front lawn and began peering into her window. She called the police. Mm. Uh, two officers from the Port St. Lucie Police Department arrived at the Hadley residence within minutes. By that point, there were fewer than 20 people left at the party. When the officers rang the bell, Tyler told everyone to be quiet and hide in his room. Then he opened the door. The cops explained that there had been noise complaints, and Tyler talked to them for a few minutes. The cops left, and the party started again. Hmm. By 2.30 a.m., Tyler's friends began to filter back to the party. Uh, it was clear by now that something was wrong with Tyler. Michael Mandel, before leaving, had grabbed 10 Percocet pills that Tyler was going to use to commit suicide and hid them in the hall closet. Hmm. When a 16-year-old cheerleader showed up with two friends, Tyler slammed the door behind them as soon as they entered the house and began checking the windows, closing the blinds as if someone were out to get him. He kept touching his hair and pacing across the living room. At 4.40 a.m., Tyler posted another message to his Facebook wall. Party at my house again. Hit me up. HMU, hit me up. Remember Facebook when it had walls? Oh, yeah. Instead of timelines? Hmm. Uh, the party might have gone on forever if the police hadn't at that very moment been standing outside his front door. Ooh. Michael Mandel had called the Crime Stoppers hotline. Ooh. He'd told them everything. <laughs> Officers Adrian and Charles were dispatched to 371 Northeast Grandier Avenue at 4.32 a.m. They parked across the street. There were three cars in front of the house. They ran the plates, and the first car registered to Tyler Hadley, the others to his parents. Hmm. As the officers walked up the driveway, they heard someone talking inside the house. Officer Charles, or Officer Green, that's his last name, I don't know him. I don't call him officer's name, it doesn't seem like I know him on a first name basis. <laughs> Through the front bay window, the shadow of a person walking back and forth. Green knelt by the window and peered through the blinds. Tyler was pacing across the living room, talking to himself with a very disturbing look on his face. His eyes were very wide and he was not blinking. 
Tyler grabbed a stack of books from the bookshelf near the front door and marched them into the back bedroom after saying something unintelligible. He dumps the book on the floor in a frantic manner. Tyler repeated this exercise twice more, returning for a second and third stack of books. Finally, Officer Green knocked on the front door and rang the bell. There was no answer, but Frank could... S oh my god, Green, who's Frank? <laughs> but Green could see Hadley through the window, walking right from the door. The rest of the house, uh, the rest of the lights in the house went off, and Hadley opened the door. He was wearing a black shirt, black shorts, and his left hand was hidden behind his back. Hmm. Officer Z um, Zamoyski? Zamowski? Zamoyski. Adrian. <laughs> Adrian drew his gun. He ordered Hadley to put his hands up and step out of the house. The officer checked him for weapons, then ordered him to the ground and handcuffed him. They asked whether an adults were home, whether any adults were home. Tyler said no. Well. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed frantic, incoherent, annoyed. His pupils were very large. He said he knows he's going to Rock Road. Is that like slang for jail? I guess. Oh, oh no, it's <laughs> referring to the address of the St. Lucie County oh. Jail. <laughs> So just take me. Leaving uh, Tyler shackled in the driveway, the officers entered the house. Tyler shouted, you can't go in there. Don't go in there. Empty beer bottles and red plastic solo cups were everywhere on the counters and floors. There are pots and pans on the kitchen counter. Well, I mean, were they cooking? Hmm. Tyler's bedroom floor was littered with unraveled cigars. On his bed were about 15 empty beer bottles and a woman's purse. In his brother's bedroom, the furniture was turned over and the floor was covered with clothing and bedding. And locked inside a closet, they found a black Labrador. Oh. This is sad. The cops passed through the kitchen and approached the master bedroom. It was locked. The officers noted, uh, noticed streaks of dried blood on the frame and baseboards. They forced the knob. The door opened. Uh, Tyler was 17 and could not be sentenced to death by Florida law. So in 2014, he was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. In April 2016, his sentencing was overturned by an appeal judge who stated the lower court did not consider the correct alternative to a life sentence. In December of 2018, Hadley was resentenced to life in prison, but this time with the possibility of parole. Oh, gosh. Uh, ha uh, Hadley is imprisoned in the Okeechobee Correctional Institution. So, uh, he went to jail 2014. Mm -hmm. He's been there ever since. He's got life. He knew it. He called it. And I think, uh, I remember reading something his, his lawyer um, wanted to wanted him to plead not guilty, mm -hmm. which like, how the fuck? But, uh, it was by reason of insanity or not insanity, uh, mental illness, not guilty by reason of mental illness. Uh, it's a bit of a stretch. Uh, yeah. So in a letter, uh, from jail to his grandparents, Tyler referred to one psychiatric pill in particular without mentioning its name. Cause people kept saying that, um, they think it was drugs that led him to do this. Mm. I wish I'd never started taking that damn pill, he wrote. None of this would have ever happened. In a letter to a friend, he said, I regret everything I did. I swear it's those drugs, man. Uh, but Tyler had also told Michael that he had purposely waited for his brother to move out before he killed his parents. Mm -hmm. That was more than six weeks earlier. Yeah. And a fellow inmate later testified that Tyler claimed he'd begun to plan the murder and the party three weeks before it happened. Right. Yeah, it was all premeditated, so... Mm -hmm. You should have come to the party, Tyler told the inmate, according to testimony. It was awesome. It was awesome. At the St. Lucie County Jail, Tyler is a celebrity. When this shit went down, it went worldwide. Mm -hmm. He wrote in a letter to a friend, I was the second most popular story after the economy. Uh, he responds to fan letters and signs Hambo and signs autographs for other inmates. Hammer time. It's fucking disgusting. But he's also been jumped and beat up, so. Good. Crazy. Disgusting. Did you say a beer? I love Hefeweizens, man. Your face lit up when I said Hefeweizen. Yeah, I was so I was thrilled because again we we'd never done one, and I I can't believe we've never done one. You know, been wanting to do one for a while. Uh, I don't even know if we've done like a wit beer before either, and I really like wit beers, but um, yeah, definitely a great one to start with. You know, these next ten, changing it up, something different. I like the connection. Party pillow. Now you picked this before you picked the topic, so how I'm interested to hear like how you connected this beer to this particular this topic in particular. Do you really want to know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I was like, all right, scary things, parties. 
So I typed in slumber party murder, and then I typed in party murder, and then Tyler Hadley came up. Oh, look at you. <laughs> wow. Hey. That is my process. Yeah. Hey, it worked. Uh, see, I wouldn't even know, like, if I just bought this beer just because I thought the beer looked cool and sounded good, I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. It's like, how am I going to connect a party to something scary? But you did it. Killed it. I got skill. Ooh. Yeah, it wasn't oh, the right. Oh, the mm. poor word choice. Yeah, no. Beer was good. Uh, I enjoyed it. I love Hefeweizens. What about you? I don't dislike Hefeweizens. This one was just a little, like, I like that banana flavor. Mm-hmm. I really like that. But in the swallow, it really put me off. Well, it's no summer fling. <laughs> That's a good point. I thought you were going to make a joke about swallow. <laughs> I was really worried. Um I, no, no, I got gotcha. you. I scored it lower. It'll probably end up moving depending on things that we try. Yeah, it's the first one. You never know. Yep. Because um, it's pleasant. It's mm-hmm. just, like I said, not something I get a whole bottle of or a whole can of. It's just mm. a bit, I think it gets bland after a while. I could see that, yeah. So it's just kind of like, hmm. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Cool. Um, yeah, crazy. Crazy story, crazy topic. Um, mm-hmm. It's wild. Good beer. Beerandfearcast.com is our website where you can listen to all of our episodes right there. Just click on the episodes link at the top and just pick one. Pick your favorite. Uh, and then you can hit play. There's a play button. If you click on the archives tab, there's a little search bar. So if you want to search like any episodes we've done or like a spooky thing, like, oh, I wonder if they did an episode about Chupacabra. Um, we did. We did. So you just type that and boom, there's your episode. Wait, did we? We did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I needed to make sure. Pretty sure you picked Blood of the Unicorn for that one. No, you. that was your... Blood beer. of the Unicorn was mine? I'm pretty sure. I think you're wrong. Oh, God, I can't, I can't remember. What's the website? <laughs> Look at the website uh, and correct this. But um, yeah, beerandfearcast.com. And then we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit. And TikTok. And every Wednesday at noon is when our episodes come out, noon central time. So we post updates uh, on our socials. It should include a link to the uh, episode where you can listen to it. We're also on every popular podcast platform. So if you prefer to listen to your podcasts on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, search Beer and Fear. We're on there. All the links are also on our About page. But and then uh, beerandfearcast at gmail.com is our email. You can also send us a message on our about page. Also, there's a contact form. And I think that's it. I think that's it for episode 51. Party Pillow, Tyler Hadley. Have a good day. <laughs>